and we really don't have time for another hour's debate on this, so we're going to go right to members' statements. And the first uh, member with a statement this morning is the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Gas prices have recently skyrocketed across Ontario. They have reached record-breaking numbers, even though this Premier promised in 2018 to reduce gas prices. This is having a real impact on the everyday affordability for families. People need to get to work. They need to take their children to school. They need to be able to get to the doctor. Doctor, yet wages remain flat and the cost of living continues to rise. In my riding of Hamilton Mountain, gas was sitting at $1.77 on Tuesday. Yesterday, it was sitting at $1.85. Today, it's sitting at $1.90. Speaker, this is a jump of 13 cents in over the course of three days. This is shocking, and I know these prices are expected to continue. Something needs to be done about this. My colleague from Timmins introduced Bill 91 last week to bring reliable regulation to gas prices by setting a weekly and daily maximum at the pump. This is action that we need to support Ontarians. We need to see affordable gas prices across the province, but that will not happen if there is no action taken. I encourage each member of this chamber to vote in favour of Bill 91 when it comes to the vote. Ontarians have had so much to, work, uh, to deal with over the pandemic, so let's not let gas prices be one of them. We need to ensure that we keep gas prices fair so people can make ends meet. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Speaker. Last month, I was thrilled to have the Minister of Seniors and Accessibilities visit my riding of Mississauga Lakeshore. We spent the day exploring the riding and visiting many exciting projects that will enrich the lives of Mississauga seniors who have contributed so much to this province. From discussing plans for a new YMCA Ability Centre in Port Credit with the Fram Building Group to the tour of the Indwell Lakeshore Lofts project in Lakeview, which includes 68 affordable housing units for people with physical and mental disabilities, as well as supporting programs. This includes our local food bank, The Compass, now located on the first floor. We also stopped by the Turtle Creek Manor, a living senior's apartment residence in Clarkson, to announce that they will receive $25,000 senior commit, uh, community grant for a new walkway around the building and support more social activities. We also met with Hannah Acuri from the Hispanic Canadian Art and Culture Association to announce another $10,000 grant for Latin-style virtual workshops for over 2,000 seniors, including a performing arts chat and exercise session. Speaker, after two very difficult years, it was great to see the smiling faces of seniors across Mississauga Lakeshore once again, and it was great to be able to showcase some of the fantastic programs we are doing in Mississauga Lakeshore, a more accessible and inclusive place for seniors and people with disabilities. I want to thank the minister and his staff for joining me. I look forward to having him visit again soon. Thank you, minister. The next member statement, the member from Quetna. Good morning, Mendika uh, Shebaya. Speaker, uh, this morning I'd like to share uh, uh, some of the good work that's been happening across Kiwetna. Uh, there's been so much uh, generosity, Speaker, that uh, I don't have time to mention it all, but, uh, or uh, if so, uh, I don't want to uh, overlook anyone, but I apologize. Yeah, yeah, when, uh, when it was needed, there was uh, plain loads of firewood groceries, water, and traditional foods, medicines, that Sandy Lake First Nation, the Skanaga First Nation, Kishinamayuk and Mashkigomag that donate, donated to communities, First Nation and communities that uh, were in need when they were in states of emergency or under lockdown. I also have to thank uh, Tanya Cameron, Rain Harper of uh, Kiwe, when that went above and beyond to help the people in Bearskin Lake. Tanya uh, organized a, uh, uh, a supply drive to and donate over $60,000 uh, worth of goods to, for Bearskin Lake, who had a state of emergency more than uh, when uh, more than half the community tested positive for COVID uh, after Christmas. 
Rain was inspired by this and raised over $10,000 herself, which was matched by the Chief and Council of First Nation. This is what Tanya said. We need to take care of each other. As much as we rely on the government to help us through the pandemic, we also rely on each other uh, as neighbors uh, and a caring community to, to say, let's do this together. These gestures uh, of love and care uh, for each other is, is leadership, unity, nationhood. It is nationhood in action. This is how it's done in the north. Uh, we work together and take care of each other. Miigwech. Next member statement, the member for Markham Thornhill. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to focus on our wonderful seniors' organization and how they continue to contribute to our society. People are now living longer than ever, and this is one of the biggest success stories in our history, Mr. Speaker. Like everyone, seniors contribute to our society in so many ways. They shop, they use services which employ other people, and they pay taxes like everyone else. They also spend much of their time volunteering. In fact, many organizations di difficult to find function with, without their seniors' volunteers. Seniors also known to give generously. They make more charitable donations per capita than any other age group. Our government is enhancing its commitment to keeping seniors safe, healthy, and active. Through six million investment in the seniors' community grant program for this up coming year, senior community grant allow seniors to engage with their local community to promote their physical, mental, and social well-being. I was very happy to provide the Markham Federation of Filipino Canadian with the 22,000 community grant. This money can make a big difference for this group, as is with the many services they provide for the seniors. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored to work with many seniors organizations throughout my life in Markham, such as Armadale Old Day Adult Club, Mark and Tamil Seniors Association, Boscrow Seniors Club, Middlefield Seniors Club, York Region Tamil Senior Association. There are several other organizations in my riding. Our government and our premier understand their needs through Minister Show Office, who play an important role in their life to receive support when they need it. Mr. Speaker, we must continue to provide support in our community to make them age-friendly and create more age-inclusive society that knowledge, that acknowledge seniors' contribution in our Province. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The next member statement, the member from St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. Recently, the Financial Accountability Office released a report confirming that after almost four years in office, this government isn't going to be reducing electricity bills. The goal should be the elimination of gouging. This is another example of rising costs for seniors and young families. Parents cannot get their children to school or get to work without a car. This government committed to reducing hydro rates as gas at the pumps, and both of those costs are rising for residents. Under this government, average residential electricity rates have increased by 4.3%. And the Ontario residents are under the cost of gasoline right now. I'm saying to the Premier that his government can and must play a role in offering reliefs at the pumps and hydro costs for Ontarian residents. The NDP tabled legislation that would regulate prices at the pump by setting a weekly price or a daily maximum. The Premier rejected that plan. Is this government seriously going to leave families on the brink without following through to make life more affordable for them? Oil companies are making billions in profit. Today I read an article that some analysts are predicting gas prices in Niagara to spike to $2.20 per litre. Wow. Who can afford that? Claiming to care about people's pocketbooks after four years of inaction it is hard to believe that this government is serious about lowering gas or hydro prices for regular families in Ontario. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From losing 300,000 jobs in manufacturing to a rebound of 330,000 jobs going unfilled. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our economy is on fire. 
with access to 187 million consumers within a day's drive from GTA, second largest automotive manufacturer, the second largest IT cluster in North America, young, diverse, and connected, Ontario is an economic powerhouse. By lowering the WSIB premium without affecting worker benefits and through red tape reduction, our government is lowering the cost of doing business by $7 billion year by year. We are making it easier for entrepreneurs to invest and thrive. That is why, Mr. Speaker, companies like Das Metal from Mississauga Malton are expanding. Congratulations to Mr. Jaswant Das on his new state-of-the-art facilities on Enterprise Way. With people from over 150 countries speaking over 200 languages, our Ontario is a true global village. So I want to say to the workers, entrepreneurs, and businesses around the globe, if you're looking for an environment to live, work, grow, invest, and succeed, I want to say thank you, thanks to the hard work of Minister Fideli and this caucus. Our message is loud and clear. We are unleashing Ontario. We are open, we are competitive, we are driving economic growth. Come join us and be part of prosperous and progressive Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, international students are a vital part of our province's prosperity, not just in the present, but also for a brighter future. They come here after meeting the highest standards of our educational institutions and contribute to the province's social, cultural, and economic fabric. And yet, many students who choose to come to Ontario to pursue higher education and, many, and maybe even build their careers here in our province face many challenges even before they get here while they try to navigate the process. Reports show that students applying from countries like Pakistan and Bangladesh, where there are no local visa processing facilities, the rate of approvals for student visas are significantly lower, whereas students from countries where local visa processing options are available face consider considerably fewer barriers. Speaker, while programs such as the Student Direct Pro, uh, Stream, the SDS program, has been helpful in countries like Pakistan, their capacity is not nearly enough to reconcile these channel challenges. We are home to some of the best post-secondary institutions and academic programs, not only in the country, but in the world. And international students, their hard work and determination are a big part of that. So I implore our Ontario government to work with post-secondary institutions to ensure prospective international students who get accepted to Ontario universities and colleges are able to get their visas and paperwork in order to come here and become a part of our province and build towards its brighter future. The Ministry of College and Universities has a responsibility to do the intergovernmental work with the federal government that's needed to make sure that Ontario post-secondary institutions can provide that opportunity for the international students who are accepted to face less barriers as they come to our great province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Guelph. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. The pandemic and the challenges of the climate crisis are putting a strain on people's mental health. Addiction, poverty, and homelessness are very real, and the effect on men mental well-being is profound. The need for new solutions to these old problems is more pressing than ever. Speaker, mental health is health and it should be treated as such by our government. And that's why I've put forward a plan to expand OHIP, to include more mental health services so people can access affordable and comprehensive mental health care. Speaker, this is why I continue to call for investments in permanent supportive housing with wraparound mental health addictions and other supports. And Speaker, I'm so proud of the work that's being done in my community in Guelph to support these kinds of projects. Kindle Community, Stepping Stone, Wyndham House, and others deserve our gratitude for the work they are doing to end homelessness in Guelph. Speaker, we cannot wait for mental health services or to be able to put a roof over people's heads. And that's why I urge the government 
to make the needed investments in mental health services and supportive housing in the spring budget so we can build the caring communities we want in Ontario. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, I'd like to take a moment to thank the former mayor of Richmond Hill and my good friend, Dave Barrow, for his incredible 15 years of service as mayor. His passion for serving our community goes beyond his time in office as he dedicated more than 35 years of public service to our residents, Mr. Speaker. Dave Barrow was first elected to office as a Ward 4, Ward 4 councillor in 1979 and served until 1985 and as a York Regional Councillor from 1997 to 2006 before he decided to run for mayor. Mayor Barrow was truly a leader in our community and always, Speaker, went above and beyond to not only serve the residents but always found ways to bring all of us together. It was an absolute pleasure and a great honour to work alongside him, serving the good people of residents of Richmond Hill, Mr. Speaker, and I thank him for his friendship and all the leadership, and I wish him all the best in his retirement and his future endeavours, Mr. Speaker, and I have no doubt that his legacy will remain a pillar in our community. Speaker, with a few moments that I have left, I would also like to take a moment to congratulate our new mayor, uh, His Worship Dave, Dave David West, on his victory. And I look forward to working with him and continue to, res to serve the great residents of Richmond Hill. And I also have no doubt that he'll do a great job also filling in the big shoes left behind by His Worship Dave Barrow. Wish him all the best in his retirement. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoba. Thank you, Speaker. There are many challenges going on in Algoma, Manitoulin, particularly on the North Shore right now. Companies like Fabri Forestry, who have been in business for a lifelong time, took me out for a tour, and they showed me over 700 to 900 loads of pulp that have been sitting roadside. And if you can't sell your wood, then you can't afford the insurance costs. And that brings me to another issue. John Gregoire is a forestry truck driver in my writing, and he told me his insurance went up from $8,000 to $35,000. He has a clean CDOR, zero claims. Here's another example. Kevin and Katie Connell reached out to my office as well. After one single accident over 17 years, their insurance went up from $15,000 to $52,000. $1,000, Speaker. And on top of that, the fuel cost has increased so much that they are paying an additional 1000 plus what recently happened with the increase. You're looking at $2,000 to $3,000 more in fuel costs. Colin Gowlett, a forestry truck driver from Hilton Beach, spoke to me about the combined insurance costs and fuel are actually putting him out of business. We've raised this on this floor numerous times, looking towards this government to actually doing something in regards to insurance costs. When, when is this government actually going to step up and help the businesses, not only in the forestry, but across this province? Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House that the following document has been tabled, a report entitled Long-Term Budget Outlook, Assessing Ontario's Fiscal Sustainability 2021 to 2050 from the Financial Accountability Office of Ontario. I also beg to inform the House that pursuant to Standing Order 9H, the government House Leader has provided written notice that a temporary change in the weekly meeting schedule of the House is required and that the House will convene at 9 a.m. on Monday, March 21, 2022. I'm very pleased to inform the House that Paige Morgan Schultz from the riding of Dufferin Caledon is one of today's Page Captains, and we have with us today at Queen's Park her mother, Rachel Schultz, her sister, Megan Schultz, and her friend, Alex Howell. We're also joined today by the family of today's other Page Captain, Dante Hillen from the riding of Hamilton Mountain, his grandmother, Janet Hillen, his father, Stefan Hillen, and his sister, Charlize Hillen. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We are delighted to have you here. And I understand there's a point of order, the Leader of the Opposition. 
Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 140 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 over the past week. Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence for the 140 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 over the past week. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you. Members may take their seats. Unanimous consent to move a motion without notice regarding private members' motion 40 in the name of Mr. Hassan, calling on the Ford government to bring Bill 86, our London Family Act, back from committee and pass it before the end of the 42nd Parliament, making it clear that Islamophobia and hate have no place in Ontario and that the question be put without debate or amendment. Sattler is seeking unanimous consent of the House to move a motion without notice regarding private members' motion 40 in the name of Mr. Hassan, calling on the Ford government to bring Bill 86, our London Family Act, back from committee and pass it before the end of the 42nd Parliament, making it clear that Islamophobia and hate have no place in Ontario, and the question be put without debate or amendment. Agreed? Agreed. Heard a note. 